Hey there fellow gamers, welcome back to Retro Python Gaming. In today's video, we're going to delve into the interesting history of the Sega Saturn and the Sega 32X. These consoles represent fascinating chapters towards the end of Sega's gaming legacy, each offering a unique opportunity to experience 32-bit gaming. First, let's explore the Sega 32X, released November 21st, 1994 in North America, one day before the Sega Saturn was released in Japan. It aimed to provide a taste of 32-bit gaming before the arrival of the North American Saturn. With its sleek black design and easy plug-and-play installation, the 32X expanded the capabilities of the Genesis, offering enhanced graphics and processing power. Games like Virtual Fighter and Mortal Kombat 2 pushed the boundaries of what the Genesis could achieve. Poor sales led to an only two-year lifespan for the add-on, selling only 800,000 units. Now... Let's turn our attention to the Sega Saturn. Released on May 11, 1995 in North America, the Saturn was Sega's main entry into the 32-bit era and a worthy competitor to the upcoming PlayStation. With its dual CPU architecture and powerful graphic capabilities, the Saturn delivered stunning 2D visuals and brought arcade-like experiences into the homes of video gamers. Games like Virtual Fighter 2, Sega Rally Championship, and Panzer Dragoon showcases Saturn's graphical powers and captivated gamers worldwide. The Saturn sold 9.2 million units, giving it a third place finish in the battle for 32-bit dominance. While both the Saturn and 32X faced challenges in the marketplace, they remain fascinating pieces of gaming history. The Saturn showcased Sega's ambition in the 32-bit era, while the 32X represented Sega's innovative approach to expand the capabilities of the Genesis. Join us as we uncover the setup, configuration, and gameplay of these two consoles within LaunchBox. So grab your favorite gaming beverage, settle into your gaming den, and let's power up LaunchBox for this unforgettable journey and relive the nostalgia of the Sega Saturn and Sega 32X. Okay, with LaunchBox open, I'm going to hit the hamburger. I'm going to go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. Next, Add Folder. Go to the R Drive. Do Sega 32X. Select Folder. Next, Sega 32X. Next, Retro Arch. We'll go through the emulator stuff later. Use current location, next, next, emu movies, next, bezels, next, defaults, next, scanning ROMs, We've got about 34 games for the 32X. Okay, 32X is installed. There it is, right here. Okay. Now I separate the 32X from the 32X CD and the Sega CD, just so I know which are the 32X CD games. So we're going to add that now. ROM files, next. Add folder, ROM. Sega 32X CD. It's going to find it as Sega 32X. We're going to change that to Sega CD 32X. Retro Arch is a default emulator. And we're going to have it use Pico Drive. Okay, handful of games. There's our Sega CD, 32X. Mm -hmm. 
Now we're going to set up the Saturn. We go hamburger, tools, import, ROM files, next. I'm going to add the folder. Now my Sega Saturn folder is broken down by regions. There's a lot of games in here, a lot of duplicates. I'll just let LaunchBox sort them out. Next, 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 next. It's gonna scan for ROMs. Should be over 2000 files, 2357. And now we wait. All right, so Saturn is done. So now we're going to configure the emulators. First, a 32X CD and a 32X. We're gonna go up to Tools, Manage, Emulators. We're gonna use RetroArch, edit it. Associated Platforms, look at Sega 32X. So right now I have it set to Pico Drive Libretto. That's one you should use. I'm not sure what LaunchBox gives you as, as the default, but use Pico Drive. That works best for the 32X. Now, if you're going to use the 32X CD games, you've got to make sure your BIOSes are installed in a proper directory. So let's go to the Libretto Docs. Here's the Libretto Docs for Pico Drive. Okay, you're going to make sure you have these in your front end's system directory. LaunchBox system directory those three files okay these are the file types it takes i believe mine are in should again scroll down see if anything sticks out playing sega cd games pico drive does support the six button controller you have to configure it in the device core options So there are some compatibility issues, just a handful of games. Fortunately, there's not many games to begin with. Some have issues. It is what it is. Go back to LaunchBox. Now the Saturn, look at all the chips it has. Two CPUs, 700 graphic chips. This is a monster of a machine that's still not 100% playable to this day. Some almost 20 years later. So as always, if you want to play the Saturn games in a native form with 100% compatibility, get a Saturn. There's plenty of ODEs for it. There's some good games out there. Again, majority of them are bad. Saturn was a learning system. It led to probably, which is my favorite console, the Dreamcast. We'll do that in the next series of videos, but Saturn was a stepping stone. It was a learning experience for Sega. So there's a bunch of emulators you can use for the Saturn. I go with the launch box default of Beetle, which is an Amenda fan libretto. Let's just make sure it is set up properly. We're going to go to Retro Arch, Associated Platforms, a Sega Saturn, Amenda fan, Saturn libretto. That's the Beetle core. Now, the Saturn has multiple emulators yabashanshiro yabuse chronos ssf so if you want to add a secondary emulator just add saturn again and then pick what you want let's say chronos all right let's find it chronos okay We'll do the dash F. We'll just leave everything. We're not going to make it a default. We're just going to hit OK. We're going to hit close. This way, if I want to play 3D baseball, but I want to use it playing Kronos, I have that option. Now you could add Yabushan Shiro, Yabuse, anyone you want. Beetle works best, but you can't upscale with Beetle. I don't like to upscale my games until I get to like the GameCube 
I like to play the games natively, but it's just when the games are mostly 3D, like that generation, you could upscale them and they look pretty good. Let's check out Libretto Docs for the Beetle. Here's the files you're going to need, and you're going to have to put these in your front end's system directory. Make sure you have these files in launchbox slash system. Now, there's a bunch of compatibility issues with the Saturn. Not, not every game is 100% playable. That's why I suggest you go through compatibility charts, add multiple emulators. For the most part, Beetle will work. There's everything it supports. Here's all the other Saturn emulators. There's a bunch. Add whichever ones you want and just follow the instructions. We added Kronos, so we have to make sure we have those. These files, these two go into Kronos directory, and these two go in the front end's system directory. So make sure you add those if you can add Kronos as well. So as far as controllers go for these two consoles and the Genesis as well, Sega has done an outstanding job of licensing their controllers. They feel great. Retrobit has done a great job. These work with the original consoles. You can get a dongle, and they work with Bluetooth as well. For the Sega Genesis, I recommend picking up one of these controllers. It's a great controller. If you want to use it on a real Genesis, get the dongle. Uh, you need one for each controller. And for the Saturn as well, there's some great controllers. They have Bluetooth controllers for the Saturn. Again, with a dongle, you can play it on a, on a real Saturn or on your PC. Even if you wanted to, your Raspberry Pi, anything that takes Bluetooth. I think even Nintendo Switch. But these are great controllers. Helps for that nostalgia. Also, Apid Do has some great controllers. They just released a, a Neo Geo wireless controller right here. This is a great controller, very similar to the Genesis. But what's pretty cool is what Apid Do does with their DIY. You could actually take the shell of let's say a Saturn controller, if you have an old controller that's busted or broke, you could actually buy the innards, the PCB board, and swap it out and it makes it a Bluetooth controller using the original Saturn buttons, Saturn case, same thing for the Genesis. In fact, they just released one for the N64, which hasn't shipped yet. I can't wait to get mine. Hopefully, by the time I get this controller, I'll be on my N64 video and we can test it out together but i cannot wait for these controllers i got four of them coming to me all different colors i bought some bought some beat up controllers on goodwill got them cleaned up pcb boards are ripped out just ready to replace the innards so i could play true n64 games on my pc with an N64 controller. I can't wait. I cannot wait for someone to do this for the Dreamcast. Dreamcast is really the only console that there is not a knockoff controller for the PC. And the Dreamcast is a great controller. Anyway, let's go back to the games. All right, let's start playing some games. So... So let's try Doom. We just played Doom with the Atari Jaguar. It would be a good comparison to see how the 32X performs versus the Jaguar. Well, right off the bat, you can see it's a little more pixelated. The reds aren't that vibrant. It's not full screen. You can see the rock border around it. Let's try a quick game. See how the controls are. Controls seem pretty smooth. Not bad. 
mean, it's doomed. Guys are very, very pixelated. Plays well. Good enough. Cut the map, hit the Z button. Very pixelated. Very dingy looking. Guess a game like Doom doesn't hurt to look dingy the whole point of the game, right? Let's go get the shotgun. So it should be X cycles. Yep. X and Y cycle through <laughs> weapons. Doom plays right. Let's try something else. Let's try Tough Man Contest. This is pretty much a punch out ripoff. I think the only thing different between this and the regular the regular Jenny version is EA. Well that's different. Uh you also have butter butter bean on the title screen in the regular cartridge version. And the crowd is much more detailed in this version. Should not be fair. So your power punches. I'm not even sure how to do them, but we'll figure it out. Yeah, that crowd has a lot more detailed in this version than the regular Genesis version. Ooh. Must be cold in the mountains. As you can see, it's... Tough man contest. There's not really much much to pick from from a 32x. Let's try virtual racing. I'm pretty sure at this point they still couldn't do square tires. They look like tank treads. But yeah, I mean, I don't even think that car is like connected in, to each other. Racing. 
go through it quick. Yeah, we're gonna, we aren't even around. Pixely. Plays well, though. Oh, that was good. I think around the same time I was probably playing IndyCar on my DOS machine, which was just so much better than this. That IndyCar and that NASCAR series for the PC was great back in the early 90s. Especially if you had a nice Thrustmaster steering wheel, lots of fun. This is not a bad game. I feel like driving around in circles. Controls pretty well. You know, you have this, and then, you know, when the PlayStation comes out, you have Gran Turismo. So, what would you rather play? No brainer there. We'll check out NASCAR for the Saturn when we the Saturn games, but that's IndyCar Racer. We'll try one more for the 32X. Oh, uh, what can we do? Try a little knuckles. Honestly, I'm not sure if I ever played this game. All right, it's essentially Sonic. Yeah, Sonic. Okay. Oh, he could fly. Oh, look at that. Double C. Okay, it's a pretty cool game. This is the first I've... Oh, what is this? Already? This is the first I've ever played of this. Who is this person? Is that my friend? Ooh, I'm gonna say no. Hold. What does that mean? Press start to skip practice mode. I have no idea what just happened. Oh, I have this person following me. Whoa. Whoa. It's like giant Mario. You know, I may have to revisit this game after I make my video. Who is this person? Hold. What am I holding? If I hold down B, and what happens? Oh, A makes them spin. Is this a button game? Okay. If I go. Oh. Oh, okay, wait, so I gotta keep him here. Well, how do I switch? Oh, okay, so I go here and I hit B. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Hit that practice mode. Well, obviously, there's a way I have to get one here and one here on these buttons. It looks cool. I'm going to play it later and I'm going to learn how to play it. I found a new game. 
All right, let's move on to the Saturn. All right, so let's play some Saturn games. First up, let's try Doom. Now, Doom is, before I get into it, a disappointment. We're going to actually play the Japanese version because it's a little better. Doom plays great at first when there's nothing on the screen, and then as the enemies come, it gets worse and worse. There are much better FPSs on the Saturn. Duke Nukem's great. Power Slave is great, also made by Lombotomy, who does Duke Nukem. Those two games are great. Doom is a disappointment, and I'll show you. I may even take the 32X version of Doom over this, which is a disappointment. The Japanese version, you could play Link Cable, multiple players, which the U.S. version does not have. As you could already see, nothing on a screen, and it's already a little sluggish. The sound in this is great. The music is very ominous. Adds a lot to the game. Which I'm not sure if any other version has. I don't remember the PS version. We'll find that out in our next video. Once we start getting enemies on a screen, you'll see it slow down tremendously. Look at the door opening, how slow it is. I mean, we're lucky if we're hitting 15 frames a second here. I much rather would have sacrificed a little screen real estate than the frame rate. I mean, graphics are pretty decent. But the frame rate just kills it. I'm not going to beat a dead horse, so that is Doom. Let's try Duke Nukem. I'll show you what an FPS really should look like on a Saturn. Probably the best, probably the best home version of it. When I say home, I mean console version, obviously. You can play this on a PC. Which recently I built some old retro PCs. I'll be doing a series of videos on that. How to take advantage of the technology that's available today and put them in old PCs. Which was the precipice of these videos because I really got into the scrum <laughs> games. And I wanted to play them without lugging my PC around, so. Look for a scrum video shortly. Or is it scum? Scum, scrum, the LucasArts games. Let's rock. I usually play Come Get Some. I don't know why I didn't do that there. This is only a test anyway. Just a test. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. You can see immediately the difference. So much faster. I know he's around here somewhere, where is he? I'm out of bullets right now. Oh, I died. 
died. Let's try it again. It's been a while since I played Duke Nukem. Damn, those alien bastards are gonna pay for shooting up my ride. I think you're coming this way too, right? again. Did I suck at this game? So that's Duke Nukem. You can see the difference. And you can almost see what Doom could have been. While we're in the D's, might as well check out Daytona. Again, there's a lot of games in this. I don't know where I got it from over the years. Uh, let's just do straight up regular. By this time, they could do round tires and not tank treads like on a 32X. I'll do automatic. Gentlemen, start your engine. Whoa. Okay. I'll help if I hit the right button. There we go. C is accelerate. You can see the screen redrawing, so. It is what it is for the time. What year is this? 95, 96? I don't think you really start seeing visually impressive graphics until the Xbox 2000. Although Gran Turismo is a phenomenal racing game. This is fun. I mean, it is what it is. Again, take it for what it was. Are you coming from the 16-bit era? F-Zero, Top Gear, whatever else you were playing to this? It is a big improvement.
for place my own. 31st? Oh boy, I'm in trouble now. Whoa. Let's get this guy and then we'll haul. Oh, did I get him? No. Sorry. That's Daytona, USA. It might have been one of the release games with the Saturn. I guess the last one we'll play together. What do we got? It was a virtual fighters, right? Wrong about that? Oh, we could try virtual racing. There's a virtual fighters. Let's try virtual fighters. It's the remix. We played it for the 32X. It wasn't bad. Sprites are small. And again, this is all through the Beetle Core, which has the most compatibility. But no upscaling. So some of these 3D games you could upscale. They look a little bit better. You'll have to use a different core for that, but you're going to sacrifice compatibility. Fight one. You are already tell how much better this looks than the uh, 32X version. Virtual Fighter. You see the difference. So I've shown you all there is to know about the 32X and the Saturn. Let's do a quick montage before I give you my outro. And I'll be back. Come on, Sarah. What's the first thing you think of?
now batting for the Mets, the shortstop. Strike right three. Now batting. Two outs Both. and a runner on second. Uh, Husky. That's got potential. Husky. It's a two-run homer. Chance passes. He's hit by Palfi. Fisho stopped it. Saved with this guy in the pipes. It's like, thank you. New York Rangers goal scored by number nine, Adam Graves, assisted by number 24, Nicholas Sundstrom. There you have it, gamers. We journeyed through the history of the Sega Saturn and Sega 32X. From the Saturn's arcade-like experience to the 32X's innovative Genesis expansion, we've explored the nostalgia and excitement that these two iconic Sega consoles. And I hope you enjoyed this deep dive into the Saturn and the 32X, using LaunchBox for its emulation prowess. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on future retro gaming content. Until next time, keep gaming and keep that retro spirit alive.